Greetings all, I hope everyone is well. So I'm going to talk about the time that I got arrested for just under a week. So what happened was I got suspended at work, bearing in mind I'm a teenager. I was only ever on shift with one person and the manager, but the manager was always in the office. So this one person was behind the till and I was just about in the foyer. So we spoke to each other a lot because we were in the same room. We were having conversations about accents and stuff like that and lookalikes and that. And I said, oh, I quite think you look Mexican. And that was just part of the conversation. I didn't think much of it. Months went by and I think I said something that she didn't like, but she couldn't really tell me off. Fricks. It was nothing bad about it. I don't even remember what it was. I just remember it wasn't very bad. And she walked away and I was like, is she telling me off for that? So then I end up in the manager's office, right? And they were like, oh, you can't be saying people look Mexican. And I'm thinking, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I can see why it's bad. In reality, I don't think it's bad in the slightest. Bearing in mind, right, this is a 25-year-old lass who's taken offence, apparently, when she hasn't really. And I'm a little teenager, the youngest guy who works there. But, like, I started this job at 16 years old and I wasn't there for, like, too long. So then, like, at random points throughout random shifts over the next few months, I'm brought into the office to speak about this. I should probably mention as well, it was on Halloween, so we were allowed to go in in fancy dress. So I went in dressed up as Bane from The Dark Knight Rises with a KFC outfit on which was extra, extra large. And they were all waiting for me when I walked in and I was a little bit late. I was invited to some Halloween party, so then when I went in, I was feeling a little bit shit. I was brought straight to the office and then kicked out. And I ended up getting suspended. In the end, the cinema closed down and I was getting paid throughout the suspension more than I usually would. And I got to go to all these football matches that I usually might have been working through so I, that was terrific no work for four months but I was very upset because it was on Halloween so at this point I was just like I walked home and I started crying a little bit I'm not gonna lie so I was like oh you know what I need a holiday but I wasn't gonna spend money on a holiday because I knew I'd be still quite upset over my shitty little job that meant a lot to me because it's the only job I ever had like I was so little so what I did was I just left everything at home I brought the shittiest clothes that I wouldn't mind getting ruined and fucking lost left my phone at home my bank card at home all of that malarkey buggered off on the train I got the first train going anywhere. I was thinking oh I might end up in Liverpool, I might end up here, there, Bristol, whatever. The train I got on ended up at London. When I was on this train to London I was thinking to myself, I'll go wherever I end up, I do not care. Like wherever I am kicked off this train, that is where I'm happy to stay. I wanted a little holiday, homeless. I've slept homeless in multiple cities, me, Liverpool, London, f even nearby places. So that happened. So at this point, right, I'm in London and there's this Scottish guy who is checking the tickets, right, but I'm pretending to be asleep. Obviously, I don't have a ticket, I don't have money or anything. And so he ends up saying, before the final stop, he's like, Right, mate, you've been asleep long enough, what's happening here? He ends up saying, oh, he got on at Newcastle and now he's off at London, which, by the way, wasn't actually true. I'd got on... I'd got on a couple stops difference within Newcastle. So I'm at London King's Cross and the barriers are all open and this guy's just saying, wait here, wait here, wait here, when he goes and speaks to people and he disappears and I can just run away. There's nothing stopping me from running away. There's no one. And he rings the police and the police take ages. And then the police end up saying, you've been charged and anything you say can be used against you in court. So I'm like, yeah, cool. End up getting put in the back of this police van, right? And it wasn't for the first time. I'm the king of going to jail for petty things. Once I was put in the back of a police van just down the hill from school and he literally drove me up and it took like not even a minute and the police van was so nice. But aye, that was that. What happened afterwards was I was taken to jail and they asked for my name and I was like, nope. I would not give what my name was. I wouldn't give any kind of information about me ever. So my name was just mate. My name was Mr. Nobody. Mr. Nobody was such a class name that came up. But these police officers trusted me so much. They were so nice to me because I hadn't done anything wrong. So they'd come down, speak to me and just leave the door open and everything like I've never been trusted so much they keep on saying within 24 hours you're gonna get charged so here's why you needed service and that and they end up getting me an appropriate adult which I said I didn't want but they just gave me anyway and so I kept on getting like everything I was saying was getting recorded I went to get my uh, my picture taken you know how they put you in uh, those mug shots I just wouldn't take my bandana off my face. That's another thing I should have mentioned. I was wearing a bandana the entire time. And so, yeah, here I am in a cell in London, somewhere in London, I don't know where. All I know is that I've been driven from King's Cross. So, yeah, then they say, you've been charged. And then I think within however many days I get moved to this other prison, which isn't so nice. Like, I remember the first one, though. They were trying to take my fingerprints and everything, and it only confused them more because I tried to stop, but obviously they're going to get your fingerprints. So they got them, and they were like, why did you not want them taken when nothing comes up? Like, they were questioning if I actually knew what my name was because I didn't have a name. So then I got moved to this other jail cell, right? And I am somewhere else in London. All I know is that I was somewhere near Arsenal's football ground because when I got released, I went over to their ground and it wasn't a long walk. I just remember looking out at that police van and seeing their ground. But yeah, that was on the way there that I saw their ground. 
Bearing in mind, my family's worrying about me at this point. And I think my dad went into the cinema to ask, like, if they have any clue where I'm at, and I, I don't even remember what they said. Bearing in mind, I was acting pretty autistic here, come to think of it. I wasn't running away, I just disappeared on holiday, but they were just worried about where I was. A holiday in jail was the best, and I tried to do it again recently in Liverpool, but the police were just too chill to arrest me. But anyway, getting back to the story, right, so I'm taking to this other police cell, right? It's not quite as nice as the other one, but I'm in there, right? I end up getting taken to court, but court is just one big laugh like they questioned that I might be 15 years old so like I didn't give my date of birth or anything like obviously I got searched and they bring me to court right and I'm just in this room with like microphones and everything it's like I'm speaking to a I'm speaking through a glass wall like I can just see loads of people on computers and like they say oh it's believed your date of birth is the first of the first 2006 or whatever it was which it isn't they just didn't know who I was so, yeah then I go back to my cell right and it's so chill like it's not as nice as the other one like to say but I did like it and then they ended up speaking to me they brought me upstairs or something and they end up saying oh you're innocent and then they end up saying right you can get released and I'm thinking to myself I sorry I can get released I was confused I'm getting released I haven't given my name I could be anyone I've disappeared and you're just saying you can get released I could be a I could be a serial killer I'd been in jail for days and then I get released without them knowing a thing about me also like I got to keep my prison jumpsuit I was wearing my grey prison jumpsuit but I didn't have a bag so I was wearing all my other clothes that I had on before over it so yeah I had grey joggers I, I let them keep the sandals I had grey joggers on like little grey trackies I had my grey little hoodie on and that was it I was in London I just wandered about I ended up walking from North London uh, just King's Cross and I was thinking I've been in London for a while now no one's ever done this little down London when they've came from up north unless they came to see someone so yeah I was thinking after looking around for a little while so I had to get myself home and I had no money I didn't ask the British transport police for any kind of way to get home so I just jumped the train to Peterborough and I just thought to myself if I get asked to get removed off the train I'll just do what I did before I didn't pretend to be asleep I don't think but then the guy stops the train he's he's saying on the tannoy in the train right we're gonna keep this train stopped until this kid gets off and so everyone's looking at me but no one knows who I am like I'm pretty unfair like I've I don't really give a shit but then these police officers come off and they remove me instantly right and these police officers aren't nice all these other police officers were really nice to me like the only one that I didn't like from the prison before was when I got interviewed this guy was being a bit of a dick to me so that was the that was one police officer the rest were really nice it's like they didn't know where I was from some of them were guessing Doncaster but no Doncaster where have they got that from I'm not from Yorkshire I live near Yorkshire I'm not from there so yeah I end up in Peterborough right and we've got these two awful police officers right and this guy was saying right no matter how hard it is I am going to find out your name and I'm thinking to myself like I've just got released from London and they didn't figure out what my name is and you really think you can I mean they weren't playing around I mean the London officers were like oh you could be from Doncaster but are you from Bradford it's like what the fuck no it's like this police officer fucking knew he was like you're from Newcastle no doubt about it and I was like right he fucking has a rough idea here like don't he so he knows where to look and so then I'm put in a police cell, right, and I've got a headache and all of this stuff, and I'm really not liking it after a while. Like, it's just not the same. It's just not nice police officers. I mean, I was thinking I was going to spend my entire time in this tight little cell where I couldn't even put my arms out, but I was only there for the tiniest amount of time. Then they ended up getting put into a bigger one. There was, like, a little TV up top. I don't remember what it had on. I think it was just camera footage or something. But, yeah, bearing in mind, right, I spent, like, six days in three separate jails and didn't have to take a shit once, so fucking fair play to myself there. I have to pat myself on the back. But then I'm like, oh, you know what? Like, I hate this headaches so much and I've been in jail for so many days like am I really just gonna get arrested at every single stop until I get back into the northeast so I go up to them and after thinking for a while a few hours pass by and I'm like here's my name the guy ends up ringing my dad right and the most mental part is right I'm still a teenager I'm still little the police officers instead of keeping me in the jail cell overnight to make sure I'm safe what they do is they actually give me a train ticket to get home and I remember checking the papers and Antonio Conte had been hired by Tottenham which took me by surprise I did not expect to see that because obviously I, I was like I, I, anything could have happened in the world I didn't know but yeah the police officers like I said they end up putting me in a police van right and they end up dropping me off at Peterborough train station bearing in mind the last train had gone so I was thinking to myself these police officers if I get killed tonight or hurt these police officers are gonna get a lot of stick because they've left me somewhere late at night 
where I'm going to have to be for hours when no one is. So what I did, right, was I wasn't too worried about getting killed. I wasn't scared about So I just ended up wandering Peterborough. I mean, I pretty much saw the entirety of the main parts of Peterborough. I went to their football ground and I was a bit unimpressed, like. And I'm not on about Peterborough sports. I'm on about Peterborough United. But after a while, the train comes and then I end up getting on it. And I fall asleep. And I go, like, one stop further. And I'm like, oh, for God's sake. So what I did was I had to get back on the train, go back home, and obviously I didn't have a ticket to get back one way, if you get what I'm saying. So obviously, yeah, I don't have a valid ticket and then someone comes on the train and says, um, hello, this ticket isn't valid and I'm like, for fuck's sake, am I actually going to end up in jail again but in a place where I might actually be fucking figured out? But I ended up getting there quite lucky and the last on the train's lenient enough because I fell asleep and I had a very fucking rough few days. So yeah, I end up back in my hometown and I end up having to walk for like 45 minutes just to get back home. And I walked to my uncle, so first of all, I don't have to walk as far. And second of all, so I don't have to walk up a big massive hill because I'm still shattered like. But uh, find out that my uncle's out and he's the only one who lives at the house. So I end up having a little walk to Asda and I'm fucking hungry like. So I just end up taking some crisps, like a little packet. Like, it's not even a quid and I just eat them. I just eat them in Asda. Don't even walk out the door, don't even walk to the checkout or anything because I still don't have any anything that I can buy anything off. And I just eat them in the store and it's like there's no suspicion at all. Like if you want to steal something from a shop, you just walk out of it in your hand. It looks less suspicious than if you're hiding it. So that happened and I end up going back to my uncle's house and then he eventually arrives home. Uh, he's having a bit of a go at me, but then my dad's on the phone and he's like, alright, I'll wait, just let him be, you know. And then, yeah, I returned home and I ended up going back to work, like, what, four months later, maybe? So, yeah, that was a rough, like, six days. So, yeah, that's the, uh, that's the story about when I got arrested for a few days in London. What part I didn't like was I had my prison jumpsuit and I wanted to keep it forever. Right, but my dad got rid of it because he said it was bad memories. And I was thinking to myself, you dickhead, now I'm going to have to get arrested again to get a new prison jumpsuit. That was memories. But yeah, he got rid of it because it was bad memories. It's like, no, they were memories. Good ones, to be honest. I liked it in jail. I quite fancied some attention once. So I went to college wearing my prison jumpsuit. I was like, oh, I've just been arrested, you know what I mean? But anyway, <laughs> that's the end of that story. Bloody hell. It's a long one. But anyway, thank you for listening. Catch us in a bit.